I am the director of the NYC Network Group, as well as the NYC Real Estate Expo. Uh, many of you have inquired of re regarding the expo, and I just want to let everybody know that we definitely have the date is scheduled for November 2nd. However, if the crisis is still very active, we are going to postpone it, of course, and have it uh, June 23rd in 2021. Um, so just want to, we'll keep everybody informed. We'll send out some messages about the show. I know a lot of our friendly competitors and competitors are also surrounding their shows, the Buildings New York, the Condo Co-op, the MBA, the NAR. It's all in that fall, late fall time period. So anyway, just wanted to, you know, let you know uh, what's going on with the NYC Real Estate Expo. Um, here today, um, we have uh, Ricky Mendez and he believes in mental conditioning over willpower. Uh, he is an international speaker, and some of his uh, biggest clients are uh, Lululemon, Costco, Home Depot, and Keller Williams. So Ricky's mission is to help us solve the world's happiness problem. So without further ado, we're gonna, I'm gonna give it over to Ricky Mendez. Thank you, awesome. Rachel. Well, thank you, Anthony. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on the uh, the people that are coming in. If you can uh, let them in as they as they join, there's also an admit all button, <laughs> so you can keep clicking that. Um, so yes, a lot of I work with a lot of real estate agents, um, a lot of different real estate companies, and a lot of different companies in general. And one of the things that I always want to make clear is all the tactical stuff, the process, the procedure, the follow up, all these things we do with our clients. In my opinion, it's, it's almost, it doesn't mean a whole lot if your mind isn't working properly, if your mind isn't working in a sense that will get you to implement those processes and procedures over the long haul. We know how important follow-up is. We know how important all these things are. We know how important it is to prospect, all those things. But if our minds aren't clear, it's going to be short-lived and it won't, we won't be able to play the long game. We won't be able to play the infinite game, in my opinion. So the first thing that I usually share with people in real estate is kind of a little bit about the mind and especially what we're going through right now. I truly believe this is the greatest time to be alive. And I truly believe there's so many ways for us to win, especially in real estate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a little presentation. I have a slide deck here. Um, I always like when people fire up the chat box. So feel free to throw something that you like or you don't like or whatever. I like to create synergy through that chat box. And uh, whether you want to throw something that you're grateful for in there or whatever that you want. And as we go through this, I want you to think um, basically one thing. How can I increase quality of life? That's what I want people to think of. What's the impact that we want to have on the world? If I'm a real estate agent, what is my purpose and what is my greater later? If I want to make a boatload of money, that's awesome. But what do I want to use that boatload of money to do? What impact will I have in the world? I don't chase money and I don't chase lifestyle. I chase impact. And when I chase impact, now I get to earn money as a byproduct. So as we go through this, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to share my screen and then we'll probably end it with some, some Q&A. If people want to ask me questions, feel free to ask me whatever you want. All right. Well, so many ways for us to win right now. And when I look at the world, especially right now, I use a, a number of different strategies. And I look at people who, in my opinion, change the course of human history. And I look at what they said and I say, can I implement that in my life? And will it change the trajectory of my life? So it's something where Viktor Frankl, I use all the time. And he said one thing. Now these things, when I look at quotes, I don't look at them to say, hey, can I post them on social media? I look at them, can I learn from them? Did the guy change the course of human history? And how can I implement that into my life? So when Viktor Frankl says, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of human freedoms, the, the, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. He didn't say to choose one's attitude in any, in, in, in when it's just rainbows and ice cream out there. He didn't say to choose one's attitude when everything's easy. He said to choose one's attitude in any given circumstances. And that's coming from a guy, if people don't know who Viktor Frankl is, look up man's search for meaning. This guy was in Auschwitz, one of the most unfathomable 
inhumane things to ever happen in our world. And he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning that basically converted the situation that he was in, in his mind, and he credits that book to getting him out of Auschwitz. So well, I use it as perspective because when the crap storm comes and it's gonna come, it's only a matter of time, but when it comes, how can I convert that negative energy into positive energy so I can continue on the path of my goals and dreams? And what a better way to do that through real estate. When I coach people, real estate agents, businesses, whatever, real estate agents are dream facilitators. Whenever I sit down with somebody and look at their prosperity plan, we start coaching them. Number one or two on that list of what they want is always to own a home. Always. You guys are built in dream facilitators. So what I went through when I bought my first house and what I had to do to get it, it was back in the stated asset, stated income days. Some of you might not understand what that is, but my goodness, people want to own homes and it's their dreams. So when, as I would look at this, there's so many ways to win right now. And I always ask people, how are you? When you're in contact with somebody or it's somebody that you're talking to, ask them how they are. It's amazing what people say. Oh, I'm okay. Not dead yet. Been better. It's amazing what we see and what we're going to talk about a lot is mental conditioning because people, it's amazing how people without even knowing it are programming themselves every single second of every single day and they're programming it for crap. They're, cro they're programming it for bullshit. And it's amazing, it's, it's no wonder why we're, we're upset and we're frustrated and, and we're full of angst and fear. So one thing I always say is great. Whether I'm feeling great or not, I always tell myself I'm feeling great. And when you look at the brain and you look at how powerful it is, it's amazing on how we can kind of trick it and manipulate it to make ourselves feel great. I'm an implementational speaker. I don't care if people are motivated or inspired. Quite frankly, I couldn't care less. What I want people to do is today, not next week, not tomorrow, today to implement one thing that you get out of today. It doesn't have to be 20. I'm going to give you a wide array of, of things to, to choose from, but pick one. And then also, if you like something and you learn, you, you like what you hear and you learn something and it increases quality of life, all I ask is for people to share the vision. And when we start looking at major muscles and major organs in the brain, it's amazing what is the most powerful. And a lot of times people don't answer this in the way that I thought they would. But I, I mean, I've studied business books on how powerful our, our smile is and how many muscles we activate in our smile. And some people think our heart is the most powerful part in the, in the body. Our human brain, and I have it right behind me, but Earl Nightingale, the Dean of Self-Development, the Dean of Self-Development in the 1930s said, our brain is the most marvelous, miraculous, inconceivably powerful force the world has ever known. So if the Dean of Self-Development tells me that my brain is the most marvelous, miraculous, inconceivably powerful force the world has ever known, I'm not gonna argue with the guy. I'm just gonna learn how to condition it. I'm gonna learn how to program it. So that is one thing that I work on literally every single day is how to program and condition my mind to change perspective in a way that serves me and the ones that I love. So when we look at that, we know how powerful the brain is through the placebo effect. Two people are sick, one person gets a sugar pill, one person gets medicine, they both get healed. Well, the person that took the sugar pill, what he actually healed them? It was their mind and what they're thinking about. And that is absolutely how powerful we are as human beings. And I, I want people to tap into that power because I truly believe this is the greatest time to be alive, but I also believe we can help solve the world's happiness problem. We have a happiness problem. We are taking more pills than we've ever taken and we're the sickest we've ever been. So how does that work? So do we have a happiness problem? No, no question about it. We also know how powerful we are through hypochondriacs, people who sick, think they're sick all the time and then guess what? They get sick. We also know this through stress. Now, especially as real estate agents or any business that we're in, we call it stress. We don't call it fear. What, what it really is is fear. We're fearful. But if I call it fear, uh, I'm weak. But if I call it stress, I'm a hard worker. So we just give it a code word. When we give it a code word, we're not really addressing what it is. Let's call it what it is so it doesn't have power over us, yet we have power over it. It's okay to be fearful as long as we can learn how to convert that energy. Now, as we're looking at elderly couples, People have lived in great health for a number of different years. And guess what happens? They are, one passes away and then guess what happens to the other one? The other one passes away. So we know what that person is thinking about when their spouse passes away. Death and loneliness and despair and sadness. 
and biochemical, neurochemicals, and all these things within the body are literally tearing us apart. Now we do that on a daily basis. Now the great thing is there is one all natural antidote, one all natural antidote to allow us to convert that energy. You don't have to do anything for it. You don't have to drink anything for it. You don't have to take a pill for it. And it's very, very simple. But so often, especially in real estate, because we know how it is when we have a closing that's about to close and something happens or an inspection comes back or whatever the case may be, and everything goes to crap and everything falls apart. And then another one falls apart and another one falls apart. And we don't get paid unless deals close. So there is one all natural antidote. And this is something that I look at literally every single day. And this call it, it's so simple in which it is, which is so simple that people overlook it is gratitude. Gratitude to me is a number one antioxidant on the planet and we can use it to convert energy from negative to positive. This is something that's so simple. I do every single day. I literally read this. And the way that I look at it is a great tool to convert energy from negative to positive. Now, my first thing is I am grateful for the screaming baby on the plane because it means I can hear. And that used to drive me nuts as a screaming baby on the plane. I can sleep like a baby on a plane. I got my neck pillow and people are, you know, they dim the, the lights down on a red eye flight from LA to New York. And then what I couldn't stand was a screaming baby on the plane going off behind my ear, like to the point where I'd be like, somebody shut that baby up or I'm going to shut it up. Like it drove me nuts because I was fearful that I wouldn't get enough sleep and that I would be not the same person when I arrived at my destination. So this is something that I use every single day to set my set point. So when the challenges come, it's not a matter of if they come, the challenges are gonna come. It just matters on how I deal with them. And then on the second side of it, things that are very easy to be grateful for. And this is where I think people miss it. People miss it because we only give thanks for the things that are easy to be grateful for, like Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving comes along and says, I'm grateful for this, I'm grateful for that. And then guess what? Next day, it stops. So we don't, it's like using, that's kind of like training for a marathon, going downhill in perfect conditions, never running uphill in any way. I don't think we use it in the right way. So this is something, whether it's real estate or any other business is a way to start to transform your mind that's available to everybody it doesn't cost anything and it's an unbelievable practice to allow us to have ultimate self accountability. When we look at the word accountability and when, especially in real estate agents, we are real estate agents are entrepreneurs that are in the self accountability game because we truly get paid what we're worth. Cause there is no base salary, base salaries and things like that. To me, they're caps and they, they limit you in my opinion. So every job I've ever taken since about 23 has been without a base salary and it's taught me self accountability. And when we look at that responsibility that we have, the responsibility, we hyphenate that word, it's our ability to choose that response. So when the crap storm comes, sometimes it's awesome in real estate and sometimes it's a very big challenge. Either way, we get to choose how we respond to that. So we, there's an inner world and an outer world. I cannot, I cannot determine the outer world. Right now there's pump, being pumped full of fear and all those types of things. I can't control that. What I can control is what on the inner world, how am I looking at that? What skills am I acquiring in real estate? What relationships am I growing in real estate? What parts of my mind am I expanding to be what's available in my business? Because there's a ton of opportunity and we know through an economic recession, some of the greatest millionaires and billionaires came out of real estate through recessions. Quite frankly, it's pretty easy to thrive when it's all rainbows and ice cream. Who wasn't thriving during when the economy started booming again in 2012, 2013, 14, 15? You could be a real estate agent with, without doing anything and be successful in my opinion. But now, now we're gonna get tested to who are the real players, who are developing skills, who are growing relationships and who are expanding their minds to what's really possible in this business. So when we look at that, I just, I wanna give this part of how the brain works and how we operate because everything that I talk about in business process, procedures, sales tactics, anything like that will stem from this. When people ask me to coach them or whatever it is, a lot of times I get asked to coach about health and fitness. So when we wanna lose weight or be healthy, that's always the number one thing people ask me about. Well, guess what? What do we have to do? We gotta eat well and we gotta work out. Okay, that's not rocket science, we know this. Now, if I eat like crap and I don't work out, 
then I'm going to be fat and unhealthy. I'm not here to be politically correct. For, quite frankly, I couldn't care less. What I'm here to do is raise awareness and change behavior to keep you on the path of your goals and dreams, especially as a dream facilitator, facilitator in real estate. Now, as we go through this and the feeling that I have, if I am in an inspired state, if I am motivated and I am inspired and I'm saying, I want to have a greater heightened level of vitality. I want to be able to trim up a few pounds and I want to have a higher level of energy. If I put myself in that inspired state, I'm more likely to take the action that gives me the result. Now at the same time, if I'm uninspired, if I'm just like, oh, I don't know, man, I, I could do this. I could, I could go eat right and I could go work out. I don't know, it's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt. If I'm in that kind of uninspired state, then guess what? I'm probably gonna eat like crap and I'm probably gonna not work out. It's not rocket science. The, R, the result is just a formality. So now as we look at this, and whoever's out there that likes to work out, think of like whatever you like to do, whether it's cardio, whether it's weights or whatever, whether it's yoga, and you think of that after workout feeling. We can choose to use our most marvelous, miraculous, inconceivably powerful force the world has ever known, our brain, to put ourselves in that state after we work out. If we think, if we think of how we feel after we work out, the, the answer is typically awesome, great, I feel alive, I'm alive, my blood is pumping, my heart is pumping, I have these things going on, my arms, my legs, everything works in unison. So if I choose myself to put that state, great. Now, this is what happens because we rely on willpower, and especially in real estate, if we don't rely on willpower, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, it's gonna be a challenge. So if we rely on willpower in real estate, a lot of times, just like in health and fitness, people say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm gonna get up at 5 a.m., I'm gonna run 10 miles, I'm gonna eat lettuce, that's my new lifestyle, and I'm gonna meditate for four hours a day. We think scale, not consistency. The universe will not reward scale, it will reward consistency. So when we think of, um, the af if we think of after the willpower, when it runs out, well, you know, when you look at that alarm clock and it's five zero zero after month one, month two, typically people say, you know what, screw it, F it, hit the snooze button and I'm off. Because of what we think will dictate what we feel, this part of it is a formality, this is transactional. What we do, the reason why we want to work on mental conditioning is to not be transactional. I can't tell you how many parents I coach with their kids that say, we got to get better grades. We got to get better grades. Well, what do we got to do? We got to study harder and we got we to do our homework. But they're not changing fundamentally on how that child feels about education and learning. So I always say, this is where the champions live. If I start to think about what I'm thinking about, and I start to condition myself by the thoughts that have a neurochemical, a biochemical and biological reactions within myself to trigger a certain feeling, I don't have to worry about this. But nobody focuses here, everybody focuses here because it's tangible, because I can see it. So that's why they don't work on what's intangible because they cannot see this. My message is to look at these, this part of it, where the champions live, and what is intangible, what I cannot see, to dictate what I can see. This is where the champions live. You research anybody that is, had created a great impact in, in the world and massive change in the world for the better, they're talking about what they're thinking about to dictate a certain state of mind, a feeling, or an emotion that triggers actions and results. So if you wanna take a picture of this, go ahead, but every single thing that I train um, after I get into process, procedure, follow-up, all these things that help us thrive in real estate, this is the foundation. I don't like to teach the practical stuff until people have the foundation on it because it'll be short-lived. And then that means my impact is short-lived. So now there are reasons why this happens. There's a thing in our brain called the reticular activating system. Very simply put, it brings out what is noticeable to you. So for example, when I started speaking, I would wear these really long sleeve uh, cloth shirts and I, I'm a warm blooded dude, so I sweat a lot. Now I would be on stage and I would have like blotchy sweat, like people in the front row would be like, oh my gosh, are you okay handing me water? So I was like, okay, that can't keep up. So I learned about sweat wicking and I went to Lululemon with a couple of friends. And I loved Lululemon and I decided to throw out all of my clothes and replace my entire wardrobe with Lululemon because it was sweat wicking. Now I had this whole experience at Lululemon. I was there for hours because I was like, I'm doing this once. I'm going to shop once 
and then I'm not doing this again. I had this whole experience, a um, number of two, the people in Lululemon ended up working for me. I was there for five hours. After that experience, after that experience, I start to see this Lululemon emblem everywhere. And when I saw that emblem everywhere, was that always there or was it just now a coincidence that I was starting to see that? Well, the answer is it was always there. And when I'm in a live audience, I ask people who can give me a phenomenon that's kind of like that. And if you're thinking of a phenomenon that's kind of like that, you may have thought of a car. Everybody always says, well, when I want to buy a car or I just bought a car, I have an emotional attachment to this car. I see that car everywhere. Um, somebody may be uh, writing on the screen. If you could erase that, that would be awesome. And hello back to you. <laughs> um, so that is the reticular activating system. It's literally part of our brain that is going to see what is relevant to us. So what's it programmed for? In real estate, if I condition my brain or my reticular activating system to see a life of seven figures, multiple seven figures, now I'm programming myself to think and see opportunities and people that can help me get to that goal and dream. We also have the conscious and the subconscious mind. Very simply put, your conscious mind is gonna run, is gonna program your subconscious and our subconscious runs everything, absolutely everything. It doesn't know good or bad and it doesn't know where, whether it's, it's good information or bad. It's just gonna act on what it's fed. So what are we feeding it? Especially right now, when the world is programmed with fear, we start programming ourselves for fear. And that is why we want to re-engage. We want to shift perspective. And that is something the subconscious mind operates at 40 million bits per second. The conscious mind operates at 40 bits per second. I don't know what that means. What I do know is the subconscious is extremely powerful. So we want to learn how to program it. How do we do that? By what we're thinking about and what we're consuming. You want to talk about pandemics? Let's talk about negativity. Let's talk about disempowerment. Let's talk about limiting belief because people are programming themselves with that literally every single day. And those types of of pandemics, if you will, have killed more people and more dreams than coronavirus ever, ever will. And this guy, love him or hate him, this guy changed my life. And if he says all change must happen on a subconscious level, then I'm not gonna argue with the guy, I'm just gonna learn how to program it. Now, when we look at the chemical and the electrical parts of the brain, very simply, dose is dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. And the A and C is adrenaline and cortisol. The good news and the bad news is very, very simple every single thing that we think so think of what we're talking about when we're in real estate and every single thing that we think when deals are closing or we're trying to grow relationships or we're trying to get referrals and the reason why we want to understand what's happening in our minds is because we're feeding ourselves good stuff or bad stuff very simple dopamine oxytocin serotonin endorphins awesome stuff they make us feel good adrenaline cortisol cortisol literally poison they are destroying ourselves from the inside out you know what they did before there was Zoloft and all the antidepressants that there are today? They took a pen and they stuck it in their mouth. And the reason why is because my brain doesn't know if I'm smiling, that's good. So it forces my face to smile. When my mouth goes like that and my eyes go like that, I get some of the good stuff. The dopamine, the oxytocin, the serotonin, and the endorphins. Now, that was how they cured depression a long time ago before there were all these drugs. That's why the mission is to help solve the world's happiness problem. We have a happiness problem. Now, the, the greatness about being in real estate is that we can help facilitate dreams. In my opinion, that is helping solve the world's happiness problem. Now, there's obviously more to it, but that is an absolute start that is helping people go after their goals and dreams. So now, as we look at um, this, this is exactly why I want people to understand what I was talking about in terms of the foundation. In my opinion, this is the absolute foundation. I teach a lot of real estate agents and companies tactics, process, procedure, scripting, all that stuff, the psychology of sales, the words that we say, how we string words together. I know it's the psychology of getting into people's subconscious and the reason why people want to learn that is because it can make them uh, people align with you the way in what you believe in. People don't give a crap that you that people are real estate agents. They just don't care. They're real estate agents, just like any other profession, are a dime a dozen. What people will care about is the impact that you want to have on the world through real estate as a vehicle. So as we go into converting energy, 
We are meaning assigning machines. We assign meaning every single second. And this is one of the best ones that I can ever share. I believe if we want to make a difference, start sharing with your clients, your prospective clients or your referrals, what your life's mission is, what your vision statement is. Now, some people might think, well, they don't care. I am here to tell you that has had, I am a real estate investor. I have bought many homes uh, when I was younger, still today, have homes that I get paid rent on, apartment buildings, things like that. And I have shared my vision with more people and I've had more people literally, literally invest with me simply because I've shared why I believe what I believe in. Now, this is Man's Search for Meaning again, Viktor Frankl, and those who have a why can bear with almost any how. I think that is extremely effective on how to change perspective. Another great author and a favorite author of mine is change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. And I think that's so powerful, especially in the world that we're in today. So if that's something we can share with prospective clients, my goodness, maybe just sharing that help the prospective client with the challenges that we're having with our families right now. I don't know what the statistics are, but I have heard spousal abuse, divorce, and all these things are going up because people are absolutely just kind of confined in a space we've never had before. And then one thing I truly, truly believe in is gratitude is the, an the greatest antioxidant the world has ever known. So if that is the case, then what greatness is out there just through simply changing perspective. So I want to share um, a, a company that's a $100 million company, okay? A $100 million company. And this is something where I want people to understand that to create great impact means you're going to make great money. I don't chase money. I don't chase lifestyle. I chase impact. So one thing I'm going to share with is uh, this is a $100 million company, and it started with a simple phrase, tell me something good that happened today. And I'm just going to, there's some feedback coming in. I'm going to mute everybody again. All right. So this is like a three-minute video. I want people just to watch this. Heck, if it's just something you can send this link to a prospective client today or a referral and say, hey, this brightened up my day, maybe that could lead to a deal. Maybe not, but maybe so. I promise you, if you do that to 100 people, it's gonna make a difference in somebody's life. Again, I don't care about scale, I care about consistency and I care about impact. So give me about three minutes to share this video. Every morning, all of us wake up with a choice to focus on what's wrong in our lives or what's right in our lives. And optimism can take you anywhere. Like most people, when we got out of college, we really had no idea what we were going to do, but both John and I were interested in doing something artistic. In other words, avoid getting a real job. So we designed a few shirts and we got out on the streets of Boston and just started hawking them wherever there was foot traffic. About a year in, we bought a used van called the Enterprise. We told each other we would boldly go where no t-shirt guys had gone before. One day, we had this conversation about how the media inundates us with negative information. And we wondered if we could create a rallying cry for optimists. Three simple words. Life is good. We printed up our first Life is Good t-shirts and we took them to a street fair. We sold 48 t-shirts in 45 minutes. It was like, wow, this is what we've been hoping for all those years, and it was instantaneous. We realized we just gotta open up and listen to people, what they love to do. Swimming, hiking, hanging out with your family, going on road trips, adventures. Let's celebrate these things together. Meanwhile, something way more significant starts to happen. We start getting letters from people going through great adversity, people losing loved ones, people battling cancer. Realizing that we we're actually helping people get through these difficult times, it gave our whole brand a deeper meaning and a deeper purpose. 10% of our net profits, no matter what, go to the Kids Foundation. Kids are the ultimate optimists. And we realize there's a lot of kids dealing with poverty, violence, illness, circumstances way beyond their control. So we created the Life's Good Kids Foundation to help kids heal from various forms of trauma so that they can discover the power of optimism. We're really just getting warmed up. It's taken us over 20 years to get here, but we've got a great brand and we've got a great community. 
they co-write the story with us every day. We're still talking about gratitude and courage and simplicity. The message is the same. The values are the same. Can you make the shift to focus on gratitude? That's what optimism is all about. It's not that everything is always great. Life is not easy. Life is not perfect. But life is good. And I love that because kids are the eternal optimists. So in your clients, if we truly, if we truly care, how are the kids of our clients doing? Are they having a tough time? Have they, you know, expanded their minds? I don't care how, how young they are. It's never, we're never too young to be able to change a perspective. We just want to be able to have somebody show us the way. So a great way to be able to do that, very simply, I'll just share my breakfast of champions. This is what I look at every morning. I'm excited. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm excited. I am proud. I am grateful for my pulse. I'm excited to share my vision with the world. And I'm proud of my ability to convert energy from negative to positive. So if we're a real estate agent in uncertain times, why don't, before we pick up the phone, before we answer the hundreds of emails that we got, before we look into the, this close, did that close, what if before we did that, we just had a quick little exercise that says, I am grateful, I am excited, I am proud. Do you think that we may look at challenges in a different light? Now, do you think that allows us to carry a different energy when we speak to our clients, when we speak to referrals, when we speak to our clients' children? Have we even asked to, to do that? Have we asked how they are? Do we know their names? Do we know what's important to them? Do we know what's going on with them? Or, and maybe they don't wanna share, but have we at least asked? Um, and so that's something that I look at. I enjoy the persistent pursuit of my potential. I ask for help and I offer help. So this is things literally that I have shared with real estate companies is to offer help and to ask for help. Asking for help does not come from weakness. It comes from strength, but people don't understand it and we get all up on our own way and our ego gets in the way and we don't ask the number one skill on the planet, in my opinion, whether you're in real estate or any other business is simply asking for help. Now, how do we, uh, get our news. I'll show you where I get my news from. I'm not saying people got to agree with me. I'm just sharing that any news source that comes in for me, for me, where I'm going to get my news from is for global thought leaders of empowerment. These are some of my mentors, Les Brown, Tom Bilyeu. Tom Bilyeu founded Quest Nutrition, a billion dollar company. Les Brown is an iconic author. Shanda Sumter, she was in World's Greatest Motivators. Lisa Bilyeu, also co-founded Quest. John Asraf, a global thought leader on brain science, on how the brain works. If we look at the brain and the two major functions are to keep us safe and conserve energy, no wonder it sees negativity all the time. If we're aware, aware of that, we can convert it. David Meltzer, um, also wanting to help solve the world's happiness problem. Mel Robbins in New York City. And Jack Canfield, who wrote a little book called Chicken Soup for the Soul and sold 530 million copies of that book and was told no by 144 publishers. So maybe there's a gift. Maybe a chicken soup for the soul is a gift to his prospective client. I believe we can help change the world and we give that to 10 clients. The book's like, I don't know, 10 bucks. What if we spent $100 and bought 10 books and sent it to some of our most important clients and shared that with their children? Who knows what impact that could have in that family now now when they come to invest in real estate i promise you the people that have actually looked out for their well-being and the in their quality of life you are now in a position to earn earn their business and this has been working for for decades for me now when we look at mentorship and when we're in a live audience i always say raise your hand if you had somebody help you with your life and raise your hand if you have helped somebody with your life so i always share with people make an i am great album we all have a phone I say make a new album and call it I Am Great. It's going to sound a little strange because we're not used to doing this. You know what we're really, really good at is telling everybody how we screwed up, how it was terrible, how we made these massive mistakes. But there's a lot of greatness in, it, greatness in us too. What about the things that we did well? What about the greatness that is in us? What about those times where we went through a crap storm but actually was able to convert energy? What about the greatness in us? So I tell people, let's remind ourselves of that. This is, uh, so in my album, this is something that I put in. This guy wanted to take his niece and daughter on this Disney cruise. I've never made more than $100,000 in a year and it's expensive. 
he finally, we sat down with his prosperity plan. He was also a real estate investor. And he said, took my daughter and niece on that Disney cruise. Rick, I want to share something with you, bro. Took my daughter and niece on that Disney cruise. Just wanted to thank you for helping me with my goals and all your support. I wouldn't have been able to do so if you yourself wouldn't have worked as hard as you did to give me and us an opportunity to work with you. I appreciate you, Rick. Thanks again, brother. So when I read this, my brain cannot be grateful and fearful at the same time. It is impossible. I can't walk to my left and my right at the same time. So if I have a tool to go to, especially in real estate, what about all those thank you cards that people have gotten from clients, referrals, whatever it is? Do we just throw them away or do we keep them, use them as a tool to convert energy to keep us on the path of our goals and real estate dreams? So this is a very simple way to be able to do that. Um, I'm just going to share with you my Corona journey and how I've looked at it. Maybe one or two of these things might, might help. Um, maybe one or two of these things you can help to share with a prospective client. Number one thing, I went on a cleanse. I did a seven-day alkaline cleanse. And you know what, Anthony? It's a cleanse that I paid for. Um, if people want it, I'll give it away for free. So this is something because I wanted my body to operate on an optimal level. I want my brain to operate on an optimal level. When we got locked down in Los Angeles, I went on a seven day cleanse. And when we learn what happens on a biochemical, neurochemical and a biological level, when our body is fueled the right way through thought, through thought, uh, thought processes, but also what we feed ourselves, we operate on a different frequency, a different vibration, a different energy, whatever we wanna call it. Um, we, I also started doing family vitality Zooms. So I talk to my family on Zoom every Sunday, 3 p.m. Pacific, and that has been awesome. Now, maybe some people are really close with their family, maybe they're not. Maybe it's something where you talk to a couple of prospective clients um, on one day a week or a couple of days a week to give them the updates. Um, Zoom has been a huge skill acquisition for me. If we're not using Zoom, in my opinion, to connect with clients, we're missing it. We're losing because there has never been a better time to create and grow relationships. People are home. Not only that, are people home? People are wanting to hear different perspectives. They're wanting to connect. They're starving to connect, in my opinion. Um, I repivoted my children's book. So I have my first children's book coming out. I rewrote the entire thing for coronavirus, for the pandemic. Um, I'm currently building a site as an online mastermind. Um, I reach out to more entrepreneurs for content advice than I ever have before. Um, I shot 45 minutes of uh, the benefits on molecular hydrogen. I've been wanting to do that since last June. So I finally was able to do something that took a lot of time. I exploded three home-based businesses in the health and wellness space. Unfortunately, it took a global pandemic for people to invest in their health on a cellular level. Um, I reached out to my mentors more often to learn and collaborate. I've done online keynotes like I've never done before. So I asked myself, as a real estate agent, how did I get better today? What new skills am I acquiring? And how is my mind getting sharper? Whatever the business is, but especially in real estate, because we are commission-only entrepreneurs and very highly paid um, commission-only entrepreneurs, I asked myself these questions. Did I get better? What skills did I acquire? And how did my mind get sharper? And it's something that when we look at it, let's look at some greatness that came through the last economic recession, pandemic, recession, challenging time. Let's just call it that. Well, there's a little company that was founded in 2009 in the heat of the economic recession. They are now $11.2 billion, a little company called Uber. There was another company that was founded in 2008, $2.6 billion and a little company called Airbnb. Also a company founded in 2009, again, in the absolute perfect storm of the last recession, $300 million, a little company called Venmo. So when I look at this, I was like, well, what greatness is in us now? What rock stars are gonna come out of this pandemic? Because there is gonna be generational rock stars that come out of this. Why can't that be us? Why can't that be me? Why can't that be you? Maybe it's your client but who knows what greatness can come out of it. So all are we, all we doing is paying attention to the pain or are we also focusing on the greatness out there and the greatness within us to create in times of struggle? Anybody can create when it's rainbows and ice cream out there. Anybody can create when everything's thriving. It's now, it's right now when rock stars are created. And again, real estate is a phenomenal tool to be able to do that. Um, so I always ask what greatness will you create? Now, when we adapt, innovate, and thrive, how to create confident, confident in uncertain times. Now, what I always say is suit up. So if I'm an agent, um, so this is what I would be wearing, if I, either this or a suit, if I was gonna be giving a, a keynote in New York City, um, it I would dress like this. So if you wear a, a power suit or 
for the women, um, whatever you wear, whenever you go to a listing or you want to be in front of a, a big, a big client suit up. So it's something that keep the same routine. If you're, if you're on lockdown and you only have a, your house to operate in, then I would get dressed in the same exact way. Now, I also want to find our what and our why. And our why is something that's incredibly powerful. This is a video um, from Simon Sinek, and he was the reason why I was able to give up a very comfortable living, um, a mid six figure, going to seven figures living, to give it all up and to focus on my goals and dreams. Um, and Anthony, I'll send you this video too if anybody wants to watch it, but that video changed my life. And I think that's what can allow you to now connect in ways that you never connected before with clients. Um, my, and I also was able to create my personal vision statement. Now, what if we had a new vision statement that we created in a personal level that we were able to share with clients and prospective clients? And this is just something that I threw together. I believe this can be our finest hour to show courage under fire for fam my family and clients. So what if somebody that we had that we wanted to do business with that maybe hadn't um, decided on what real estate agents or brokerage to go with, and we were able to separate ourselves in a way that showed how much we're gonna make an impact on the world. And then what if we shared it? What if we just uh, were not able to go to listings the way that we were able to before, but what if we got over ourselves? And this was a challenge that I did myself, but when I point a camera at myself, I'm like, I'm gonna be in front of stage in front of 5,000 people and be absolutely fine. The second I turn our camera and reverse angle at me, I struggle with that. So what if we created a personal vision statement, got over ourselves, and shared it. And when I mean get over yourself, I mean get over yourself and share it again. Because what's gonna happen is we're gonna feel limiting beliefs, we're gonna feel self-doubt, we're gonna say, oh, what if people don't like this? And I say, get over yourself and myself. This is something that I have done consistently. And I ask myself two questions. Do I sincerely, sincerely believe in this? And does it inspire me? If it inspires me and I believe in it, I send it. And I think that's a different way to separate ourselves with our clients and prospective clients. And then build relationships. We've said this things a million times. Your network is your net worth. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Um, our attitude, our income, and our lifestyle, they're an average of the five people that we spend the most time with. So if that's the case, how are we using this time to connect with prospective clients or clients or referrals in a way that we haven't done before? I don't think we'll ever, ever have another time in the world where it's a better time to grow relationships. And we can create a for purpose business. Tony Robbins, again, if you like him or hate him, that could have changed my life. And we talks about the secret of living is giving. What is the for purpose business? So now I have literally taught different real estate agents to take a part of the proceeds, whether it be 5%, 10%, whatever you feel comfortable with. But there's some percentage that every transaction you make money on goes to a cause, goes to a, a, a foundation, goes to a charity, whatever it is. But now it's for purpose. It's not for profit and it's not nonprofit. Nonprofits are great, but they're always having to get money from people. For profit is awesome, great, you're making a boatload of money. What impact are you having in the world? Combine these things and you have a for purpose business. And I think when people have a for purpose business, not many real estate agents are really throwing that out there every second that they get. And I think that is a separation through education. So we're making an impact one way or another. Now there are people watching and I always ask, who is watching you? And this is a little seven-year-old girl named Brighton Hatter. Her favorite name is love. Her favorite word is love. And I think this is how we impact the world. Now, one thing that you can do for one child out there that can deal with what we're going through, they're confused. Their kid, their friends can't come over and play. They may be stir crazy. Whatever the case may be, we as leaders in the real estate game, dream facilitators, have a way to impact the world and especially through um, not only women, but girls. I believe the world is starving for women empowerment. I believe the world is wanting to know more from women. I have four of my biggest women mentors on my wall, Shanda Sumter, Mel Robbins, Carolina Protsenko, and Lisa Bilyeu. And I, this, the, Carolina's 11, and she gave me one of the best definitions of goal setting I've ever heard. If you have goals, you can grow up and be more than what you were. That was coming from an 11 year old. So sometimes the kids got to empower us. And I think that's a tremendous, tremendous opportunity, not only to learn and grow, but to contribute from the world because people are watching. They're going to watch how we deal with this. 
And if we deal with it in a productive manner and we, we acquire new skills and we expand our minds and we grow relationships, that's what they're going to learn. If we pump ourselves full of fear and we, all we look at is pay attention to the pain, then they're going to do that too. So there's much more at stake here than being a real estate agent or a broker or an investor. It's something that we can use that as a vehicle to make an impact. Again, I don't chase lifestyle, I don't chase money. I chase impact because when I chase impact, I will make money regardless. If I chase money, I may or may not make an impact. And for me, that's not fulfillment. So when we chase fulfillment and impact, a whole world opens up. I always say, be there for your family or community now, and they will be for there for you later. And this is happening all over the country, whether it's Keller Williams, Compass, Nest Seekers, or a small boutique uh, brokerage in LA. People are being there for their clients in ways that other brokerages are not. It's very simple. And what I mean by that is in unprecedented times in banking, you can call and ask for your clients. What a great, what a great way to do that. Now, I have helped, I'm not even ads, I'm not even an active uh, agent, I'm an investor, but I have spoken to people who don't understand financing and within a couple clicks, they can actually have their mortgage the next three months uh, pass off. So if they don't know how to do that, why don't we do it for them? And the decision makers are home. In terms of cold calling, it's never been a better time because decision makers are home. They don't have anywhere else to go. And they're listening. They're more open to listening than there ever have been in, in the past. Um, and I want people to share their wins. Whether you're, if you're in a brokerage, brokerage like uh, you know, Douglas Elliman or one of these major, major brokerages, then you have a lot of people to share with. Share your wins. Share what's going right. Ask people what's going right with them. It's a great way to learn, but also a great way to share and a great way to inspire. Um, and this is one of uh, my mentor, Dave Meltzer. I'm going to spread happiness like a virus you've never seen and strengthen the shit out of my immune system at the same time. So that is a great way to share positivity. And when we do that, our brain and what we're thinking about, if we think about what we're thinking about, our brain will start to think about things that will trigger an inspired state, a state that will serve us to take that action and result. The action and result are merely a formality of the intangibles of what we're thinking about and what we're feeling. And when we can tie that, we can tie that to being dream facilitators in real estate, the whole world opens up. And this is not rocket science, it's just for whatever reason, so few people do this. Um, and I always share, this is one of my favorite quotes of all time, and I like to keep it simple. So my full name is Ricardo Alberto Mendez, and I got a C minus in college Spanish class. So I like to keep it simple. And Dr. Seuss keeps it simple. And maybe this is just something that you can share with a client today, but I look at this every single day, ma'am. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own, you know what you know, and you are the one who decides where you go. Um, this is what inspired me to write my, my first children's book, and I believe we can help solve the world's happiness problem, especially as dream facilitators in real estate. So my two favorite words are thank you. So I wanna thank everybody for listening. Um, we have another maybe 10 or 15 minutes or so. And what I can do is just, again, thank you everybody for, for coming and listening. And hopefully we got something out of that or you got something out of that. Uh, these are all things, not only that I teach real estate companies and agents before I go into process, procedure, follow up, scripting, all that stuff. Um, but it's something that has, has not only served me, but, but a lot of other people as well. Um, so with that, uh, Anthony, I can just take some Q and A if people want to ask questions uh, in the real estate game or, or whatever. Does that, does that work? Yeah, okay. Um, so if you have questions, just go ahead and unmute yourself and I'm happy to ask, answer any questions that people may have. Um, just unmute and go rock away. Hey, Ricky, my name is Corey. How are you today? Great, Corey, how's it going, man? What do you, what do you define as success, Ricky? So I look at success is, and I, I get this from one of my mentors, but if we can make an impact on anybody, and it doesn't have to be big scale, it literally could be like when I go running along the ocean right now, and you can see fear, you can see fear in everybody's face. What I like to do is I give a big smile, I got chubby cheeks, and when I smile, my face goes like this. So I like to smile and give a thumbs up, and I say, we got this. To me, that's contribution. So the scale, it doesn't matter. I don't have to donate $100 million if I can, great. 
I gave my largest charitable contribution last, last year, which was 1500 bucks. That was a big deal for me. I'm going to put a zero, another zero on the end of that. But my point is that the, the universe doesn't reward scale. It rewards consistency. So for me, it's random acts of kindness. And I want to feel good about myself when I'm by myself. I get that from Tom Bilyeu. He's a dear mentor of mine. That to me is success and happiness. Feeling good about myself when I'm by myself through impact on a small scale, but consistently. Thank so you. I, look, I look every day to make any type of impact that I can. And that might be just smiling at somebody. Maybe that smile is said, change the perspective for that one person where they were like, huh, somebody out there is, is at least having a good moment. Maybe they didn't have a good day, but they had a good moment. If I have a good moment, I can build off of that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks so much, Anthony. Continue, Julie. And um, thanks to everybody for coming. And reach yeah. out uh, if any questions. Yeah, thanks, everybody everyone. Have, everybody have a good weekend. All right. Go, yeah. Ricky! <laughs> 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 <laughs>